Hey good people, welcome back to Beauty in the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you are new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. So this was kind of a surprise release for me. Today I'm gonna to be playing with the new Nomad Cosmetics Lapland Finland palette inspired by Santa's Village. So if you wanna see the swatches and hear a little bit more about this palette, keep on watching this video, let me know what you think. And before I get into my little, you know, intro thing, it is mimosas and makeup number 99. Today I'm drinking wine. It is Yellowtail Red Sangria, yes. So if you wanna see me play with this palette and hear a little bit more, keep on watching this video and let me know what you think. And if makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy and you wanna hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community. I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. So I hope everybody is doing well this Sunday. Okay, let me just say this really fast. Just, just the thought that's on my mind. I would like to propose, and maybe we can get the word out. Let me know if you agree. And this is probably more for parents. I really believe that Halloween needs to be moved to the last Saturday of the month because what are we doing with Halloween on a Monday? <sighs> this has really messed up my agenda. First of all, I, as an adult, have really enjoyed Halloween. I've enjoyed partying, festivities, dressing up. Actually, um, when my husband Mark was alive, we would throw, we did three of them. We would do these BYOP Halloween parties and they were great because I don't wanna be out in these streets. I don't wanna be out hanging out. There's too much going on. So when we decided to do these BYOP parties here, um, it was at this house. It was great because our friends would come, they would dress up, we would have a DJ in the basement, we would put the furniture outside, and it was just great, and we would always do it the weekend before. It was a great idea, it was a great time. But this Monday Halloween is just too much for me because then I have to go to school on Tuesday. And because there's school on Tuesday, people wanna start trick-or-treating at 4.30. No, no, I'm not into it, I'm not excited about that, and nobody's gonna notice or care that my porch light is off at 4.30. Now, I do, for the kids, everyone comes over to my house and my sister and I, we take the boys, we take them all around the neighborhood because this neighborhood is like the deal for trick-or-treating. People just get dropped off and are walking around and people dress up their homes and everything, and it's great. I used to do the same thing. I used to really, really dress up the house on the inside, but, my house is a whole nother story right now, so I just can't put out any extra things to add to what's already in the house right now, called clutter. It's fine. So still doing the same thing, having everybody over, and then the grandparents kind of man the house and hand out the candy, and all that's great. But the issue is, is that we all have school and work the next day, and nobody feels like doing that. Now, I live in a court, and my neighbors, they all just band together, and they keep their candy at a table sitting outside, and then they drink and they have a good time. I can't participate in that. Not when I have to go to work. I mean, I can, but it's gonna be limited. Who wants to do that? So I would really propose, like, it could have been today when I'm filming this night. What is this, the 29th? I would have preferred. Let me know what you think about that. Just wanted to share that because that was just, that was on my chest. Let me tell you what, what else is on my chest. Rihanna gave us some music, gave us a trinket. I'll take it. I will take it because if you watch me on Purchase or Pass, anytime there's any Fenty anything, especially when it was that catch up and makeup thing, it's like, I need my album. Like, I'm, I love Rihanna. Like, I've seen Rihanna in concert twice. Like, I really enjoy Rihanna and I need, I need, I miss her voice. By the way, there is this Rihanna lookalike. You know how they say everyone has a doppelganger? I'll have to try to find her Instagram because I don't know her name. I follow her, but I only see her when the posts come up. So I have to go through. I have never seen someone look so much like someone, but she looks just like Rihanna. Like Rihanna has a very distinct a lip shape and structure where it goes down like right here. I, I, I just have never. Rihanna gave us a song, you guys. And oh my God, Tyrone was like, you didn't listen to the new album. I was so pumped. I was like, what, what? I didn't even talk about it on Purchase the Past. He's like, no, it's just a song. 
So the song is on the Wakanda Forever soundtrack. And it's a tribute to Chadwick Boseman, who is black, was Black Panther. And Thames wrote it. Do y'all know who Thames is? So I was talking to my friends. I'm sorry, because y'all did not ask for this. Thames is an amazing singer and songwriter and her voice is really rich. And I was talking to one of my friends and they were like, I did not realize this was a woman until last week. Uh, she has a song that is one of my, probably one of my favorite songs of all time at this point because the lyrics are just my whole life. Like talk, it, the song is called Free Mind and it's just talking about the peace that you cannot buy is a free mind. And that's where I'm trying to be, y'all. Like, I don't think y'all understand like how hard I'm really trying to work on myself to, to have that. This is the peace that you cannot buy. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It's called Free Mind. My mind ain't right. <sighs> She wrote the song. She was honored to have Rihanna sing it and Rihanna was honored to sing the lyrics and they're all honored to pay this tribute to Chadwick Boseman. And the song is called, I think it's called Lift You Up or Lift Me Up. Y'all, oh my God, that's it. Rihanna gave me something. Y'all will not hear me talk about Rihanna not giving us music. Cause I'll take it. I will take that until we can get it. What I won't take is the, the ketchup and makeup. I won't take that. That's what I'm not, mm -mm. So set me free. All right, that's it. Let's go into Nomad, y'all. So when I saw the sneak peek, first of all, Nomad has been on some serious destinations this year. I feel like this, I haven't seen so many releases by Nomad all at once and or in one year and I haven't been doing makeup for a long time, but the releases seem to be more spread out. I still enjoy the teasers, the shape reveals, and trying to figure out where the destination is, which is always hard for me, because now I'm realizing I really haven't been like that many places, so I'm like, I have no idea, you know? The last destination was the Hudson Valley, which was the fall theme palette. Now we've got this Christmas release, which is inspired by Lapland, Finland. So we've got inspiration from the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, as well as Santa's Village. So we've got a Christmas palette here, you guys, and I'm just going to grab my phone and read what they shared on the Instagram post and then a little postcard that came with the palette. Oh, I just realized my name was on this. Happy holidays to you and yours, Kara. Okay, I'm so excited, my hair. Okay. So from their Instagram, it says, paying homage to the home country of co-founder Auntie, this area of Northern Finland has lots of reindeer prancing, winter lights dancing, and is the official hometown of Santa Claus or oh I'm gonna have to go ahead and, and look up this pronunciation hold on because I'm not I'm gonna mess that up in Finnish there we go Julepuki. and that's how you say Santa okay if you noticed our clue in the hashtags and if you don't believe us Google official hometown of Santa Claus and for everyone who guessed North Pole, as a kid growing up in the U.S., I was right there with you. Santa always was from the North Pole. Wait. Okay. Okay. It is why we added in the other two clues. The North Pole has even more days without sun, around 75, and surprisingly, it doesn't have lots of reindeer given the terrain. How true. So Santa's village is in Finland. I was today, right now years old when I found that out. And I do know that there are no reindeer in the North Pole. So now the teacher in me and the learner in me wants to know, understand, and question where the North Pole came from. So I will be looking that up anyway. This palette is a nine pan palette and it's $29. The launch date is November 21st at 11 a.m. EST. And this is a limited edition palette with limited stock available. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let me see if there's anything different on the postcard and I'm gonna show you the postcard. 
So this is the cute little postcard that came with the palette and they do this with every palette that they have. And here's the back. And the story is dashing through the snow to Santa's village. Found way up north in Lapland, Finland, Santa's home is a magical place full of reindeers prancing and winter lights dancing. After frolicking in snow, visiting with elves, and relaxing in traditional Finnish sauna, you can't help but feel that childlike excitement for this most wonderful time of the year. The palette, Christmas cheer, a color story of making spirits bright, Holiday mats, white snow, green fur trees, and Santa's red suit paired with, you would even say they glow, sheer and shifty shimmers, perfect to highlight eyes, cheeks, and lips. So they donate to a cause pertaining to every location that they use for a destination. We are so proud to support the Finnish Association for Nature Conservation that works to protect the Finnish natural environment and promote nature conservation. Oh, an auntie. So, you know, Nomad is a husband and wife team and auntie is the husband, Felicia's the wife. Oh, this is, this is so cute. Now, I would also like to share that this uh, formula of eyeshadow has extra fine pigments and cloudberry seed oil to help keep colors as fresh as winter air. And I do believe that the shimmers in this palette are designed to more so be toppers. And as you heard that you can use them on the eyes, cheeks, and lips. The Nomad formula is cruelty free and vegan. And this palette has a shelf life of 12 months. And it's a collaboration with Santa and his elves. Uh, so this palette, you can see there's like a glare on here, but you can see the Aurora Borealis and Northern Lights here. Oh, by the way, if you have ever seen my little, I only did one, my not little, but it was on one week, one palette series I did of the Iceland palette. I still have plans to go to Iceland in 2024. So just letting y'all know that wasn't for the video. We can go to Finland too, really. This looks pretty. So here is the palette. The shimmers, I'm trying to think I, feel like they look a bit different than their traditional shimmer formula. Let me turn off the ring light. This ring light, y'all, is really the bait of my existence. I'm letting y'all know. I'm really trying to figure out how I can do this without the ring light, but I, I, I'm not there yet. When I get my room together, which will hopefully happen in the earlier part of 2023, which is right around the corner, it, it, it'll be a little bit different. Here's the palette. And I was saying that these shimmers look a bit different, I think, than the other, uh, I was saying that I think these shimmers look a little bit different than other Nomad shimmers. I am not sure, but this is a really pretty palette. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave this light off because we're gonna go ahead and get into these swatches and I'm just gonna swatch them as we go. Haven't touched this palette. I did look at it. I was so happy when I received a palette. But um, like I said, this was a surprise for me and it's such a cute little Christmas, a cute Christmas release, not a little release. It's a cute Christmas release. Let's start with the first shade, which is Rudolph. Saying it in the background. Here is Rudolph. Yeah, these are sheer. Mm -hmm. So here's Rudolph. And as you can see, I think they had a great description for their shimmers because I, I do see this being able to stand alone, but I think it's gonna be better as a topper. And it's got a really sparkly reflect to it, an iridescence to it, it's really pretty. And the second shade is White Christmas, and it is a matte shade. It's white, but it's not the whitest of whites, if that makes sense. It's more of a off-white. Maybe not, I, it might not be an off-white. Let, let, let's just look at this watch, and then we'll decide. And the little Santa, did y'all see the Santa embossing? So cute. So the four mattes have the Santa embossings. So here we have White Christmas. And next up is the shade Peace. Next we have the shade Santa. And Santa's a beautiful red matte. So this next shade, this middle one, I am gonna have to look up the pronunciation. Cause it looks like it says Corva Tunturi, but I, I don't want to mess that up. Corva Tunturi. 
almost had it. Korvatunturi. Korvatunturi. What does that mean? You know, with the pronunciation, they should have what it means. Cordova Tortorni is a fell in Lapland on the border between Finland and Russia. So it means ear fell. It's a mountain, referring to the mountain's distinctive profile. It's covered by a thick pine forest and surrounded by frozen lakes and sits on a landscape over which hundreds of thousands of reindeer roam. Okay, there we go. It is the home of the legendary character Father Christmas. It is the location of Father Christmas secret workshop where toys, trinkets, and gifts are said to be made and eventually wrapped by elves. Who knew? Okay, so that's where the workshop is. I bet y'all didn't know that. Well, if you did, let me know if you knew that. I had no idea. And you know, it's funny because as soon as I saw this reveal, see, I'm not the type of content creator that can just like have stuff pre-filmed. And as soon as I saw this color story reveal, like everybody's video popped up and I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. But a lot of times when I watch um, other videos because they get them up so fast, I don't feel like people go into the shade names and things like that. And I'm always really curious about things like that. I'm like, where did they get these names from? Or what do they, what do these words mean? Like it's hard for me to hear people use words or see words and I don't know what it means. I'm not the type of person that's like, oh, okay. Like, you know, I feel like, no, what does it mean? Like, I don't, I wanna know. So let's go ahead and swatch this one. So it's another shimmer. You're gonna have to, I'm letting you know right now, dig into these. And actually, didn't realize this. These are like, let me just show you. So I just dug into this shape. You're gonna have to dig into this to really get, you know, a good swatch. Now for a swatch, on your eyes, you're not gonna have to do uh, as much, I don't think, to get it to show up. Again, it's supposed to be a topper, so. So here is the swatch for Cordova Tortoni. I'm sure I said that wrong already. We have Fir Tree, which is a beautiful deep matte green. So there's Fir Tree. I was so excited. I just realized I didn't even take any pictures of the palette before I started swatching it, but um, oh well. Mm -hmm. All right, last row we have sauna. So I'm wondering if Finland has some of the same types of uh, activities as Iceland. I know Iceland has the, um, the lagoon, which is warm. So I'm thinking that saunas would be popular maybe in Iceland as well, because you have that like cold weather. So the sauna would be something nice to go into after being, you know, out in the, in the cold, I'm thinking. So there's sauna. Next we have the shade Elf, so the matte gray. And lastly, we have the shade Winter Lights. And this is the Nomad Lapland Finland Santa's Village eyeshadow palette. All right, so let me know what you think about these swatches and this color story. I will say that it's not a gimmicky Christmas palette, which at this time of year, we see a lot of that for the holidays. I mean, we haven't even hit Halloween yet, but we've seen some of those releases. We have, we, let's be honest. And we see some of those same types of uh, gimmicky color stories for Christmas. And I'm, and I'm not saying gimmicky is bad. What I'm saying is, is that I think I have enough of that. Well, actually, do I have any Christmas palettes? Mm -hmm. I have Give Me Glow, what was that, Christmas Morning? And I do have Silent Night, but Silent Night from Glaminatrix is not a, a traditional uh, color story. So maybe traditional and non-traditional is what I'm looking for because I think when I say gimmicky, it sounds negative and that's not what I mean. So this is Christmas, but at the same time, this is a palette I could see these colors being used outside of Christmas, but the palette still says Christmas. I mean, when I look at like, matter of fact, no. What says Christmas is this red and this uh, deep fur green, but everything else, I mean, is, is really different. I also like 
that they did this nine pan story. This is the first palette from Nomad that I have in this format. I know they came out with a Christmas palette last year that was in the same format and I don't have that one. It was like, I think it was inspired by Christmas lights. So this is the first one that I have and I don't mind their 15 pan or their 18 pan palettes. And when you get into like 18 shades, you know, it's a lot, but like with the nine pans, I, I like that cute and kind of concise palette. Like I can see things a bit better. So I'm happy with this color story. And at the same time, these colors in here kind of present a challenge for me. So let's go ahead and just explore this palette doing one look on each eye just to see uh, what we can come up with. I'm really interested to see. I have no clue right now. So let me tell you what's on my face. I'm wearing the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation with the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. So for my powder, I don't have more Chantecaille today. I'm actually wearing the Hourglass Elephant Palette and I'm using this powder here on my under eye because this one is a little more, I like it, but it's a little more, I don't say ashy, it's just, it's a little cooler. So I use this one like more on my nose and like over here, but then this for my under eye and my face. And then for bronzer, I'm wearing the Chanel bronzing powder in the shade Sunkiss, which is the medium shade. And for blush, did a little interesting combination here. I took Ethereal Glow from Hourglass, which let me show you because Ethereal Glow is a bit of an ashy blush. Like it is a blush, but it is really ethereal. Like when you blend it out, but what I did was I mixed it with Pat McGrath Desert Orchid. And I just thought that combination was really nice because Desert Orchid warmed it up a little bit. I don't know if you can even see it, but Desert Orchid warmed it up a little bit. Let me show you. So I, I don't know if you can tell, but there's just a little more pigment from Desert Orchid. And I did that because I'm just not sure what kind of looks I'm gonna do, and I just wanted to have something on that match because I didn't wanna figure it out afterwards. A little bit of laziness, <laughs> but sometimes I don't wanna have to figure all that out afterwards and just have the rest of my face done. Now for lipstick, I took one of my KKW Beauty. Yes, I still use these lip liners. Let me see, this is the shade Russet. I just, I loved her lip liners, like, and then I paired it with the Natasha Denona My Dream Lipstick from her new collection. This is the shade Natasha or Tasha as I call her. And that's it there. So it's a really new look and I thought that that would be great for this palette because some of these colors are really bold. For eyeshadow primer, I'm gonna be using the NARS Soft Matte Concealer and the NARS eyeshadow primer that I really wanna try has not come back into stock because I was gonna get that at the Sephora sale. They do have it at Ulta, but I was just trying to go ahead and get the 20% off. But this has been doing really well for me as a primer. I use it as an eye primer because it's too light for me for a concealer. I had bought this a while back and when I was going through my makeup and trying to declutter things, I saw this and I'm like, I had so much left because it was too light. So I said, I'm gonna use it as an eyeshadow primer. So I'm thinking this may be close to what the MAC paint pots are like that everyone really likes still. Maybe I need to get a paint pot. Do y'all like the MAC paint pots still? Let me know, because everybody still seems to love those. Okay, now that my eyes are primed, let's go ahead and get into the first look. All right, the first brush I'm gonna use is the BK Beauty 202 brush. It's just a perfect brush for blending. And hmm, let's go into the grunge, let's, why not? Let's start with the shade Elves, which is this deep matte gray. And I'm gonna just go into that and tap off the brush. I'm gonna just start by kind of tapping it and placing it in this outer corner and kind of circling it around. I really like to build up my shadows because it can be too much sometimes. I, I like to really create a gradient with my looks. 
so that's the plan with this shade and the good thing is we have white christmas to blend it out which is that matte but i also don't want it to look too frosty i might not even need to really because this right here looks good the nomad mattes can kick up a little bit of powder in the pan but i wouldn't call them powdery mattes there are some mattes that i use that are really really powdery but none of that ever really bothers me I've noticed over time that those mattes really blend well and you're able to use deep colors such as this one as a transition shade, which is always a surprise for me. I'm always like, oh, okay, like, cause I was looking and I'm like, there are no transition shades in this palette, but do we need one? Like we have one and that's because of the formula of the matte shadows so that's pretty it is hmm. so next i'm going to take a bk beauty a502 brush i'm going to go into fir tree which is that deep green and put this in the outer corner and crease i'm trying to think of a palette where i have a matte like this this is really pretty this is really rich oh yes this is like Christmas grunge. Oh, and I know we're having a chat right now. So while I'm doing this, let me know what's going on with y'all and the Sephora holiday savings event. Have you placed any orders? I did one order and I don't know if I'm doing anything else. I got many of the things that were in my loves list, but I'm mad because I was talking about the brand Kiehl's and how I really love that brand. And they have this really cute advent calendar on their site. And finally today I was like, I'm gonna get it because it just looks so good. This is gone. Then I went to check Sephora and see if they had the advent calendar and they don't. Little side note. So fur tree. Fur tree might be one of my favorites. What I'm thinking about is, should I go ahead and take fur tree all over the lid? And I'm thinking that, well, I'm doing it, not thinking it. I'm doing that because since these shimmers are toppers, I think that fur tree is a great base for one of these shimmers. And today, where is my... I need a setting spray or something because I always forget. And with Nomad, I think the shimmers can, you know, use that setting spray just to give them a little more of a pop. Because I complain sometimes about the shimmers and then I never use them with a setting spray. But look at that. Are we, this is a look. You could just put a little bit of maybe elves on the lower lash line, which I still might do. But that's a look right here. But I do wanna showcase the shimmers. So I think I'm gonna go ahead with um, Winter Light. I mean, we could do, I think Peace will be an inner corner. Wait, wait, wait. So let me get my spray and we'll put Winter Lights on the lid. So I grabbed my Mayron Mixing Medium and because it seems like you really have to go into the pans, I'm gonna use the Blend Bunnies B2 brush and here's what it looks like. I'm actually going into the pan first and then I'll spray just because I don't want these shades to get hard pan. They seem to be a bit hard pressed in the pan. Oh, that's pretty. This is really nice y'all, look. And that deep base, like if you just use this as a lid topper, that was not gonna give it. It wasn't gonna give you what it what it needed to give. And it gives you that Aurora Borealis Northern Lights feel. So I am gonna go back into Fir Tree just right here on the outer corner, just to have a better blend. I feel like Marky's out there snooping around for food. For the lower lash line, I'm gonna take my favorite Ruffer 26 brush into Elves. Elf. Oh my gosh, this shade reminds me of a lump of coal. So Marky's really obsessed right now because he thinks he's getting a lump of coal for Christmas. I didn't say that. He's reading, if you've ever seen the No David books, if you haven't, just look them up because David be doing too much. 
So he's like, I don't want a lump of coal, but Marky, mm, he might need a lump of coal. I'm like, y'all know, Marky's on the chain. I know y'all see him and like, oh my God, he's so sweet. He's so hungry. He is so stubborn and off the hook sometimes. Mmm, Christmas grunge. I'm into this. So let's do an inner corner highlight. I think I'm gonna go with Rudolph. Hello. Hi. Hey. What's up? I just Huh? I play my iPad. You're playing your iPad. Right no. Hi. What are you out there doing, sweetie? I slammed the doors. You you're slamming doors? Yeah. Can come and see what I'm talking about. Why? Why are you opening and closing doors? What? For what? Why? Excuse me. But why are you doing that? What are you looking for? Candy corn. Close my door. That's why you got a cavity now. Here's the deal about the candy corns. Because I think he talked about candy corns in another video. I, I'm not buying them. So everybody else, I mean, I'm responsible because I'm allowing people to give them to him, but they're not always giving the candy corns to him when I know. So I, not fully responsible, but mostly responsible. That's why he has a cavity. I'm not purchasing them. I'm not buying the Lucky Charms. Like he gets a Lucky Charm granola bar, but like I'm not getting you Lucky Charms so you can pick all the marshmallows out and get a cavity. No, it's too much. I keep telling people, stop, don't enable him. Cause Marky likes apples and things like that. Well, this is a nice little inner corner pop here. Yeah, this is pretty. Okay. All right, y'all, here is look number one. Let me know what you think because I wasn't thinking this was gonna be the look, but I really like it. Mm. Let's get into look number two. Y'all know I'm going to be using this red. So I'm gonna go back into the BK Beauty brush. Doesn't seem to have any pigment left, which is a plus. And we're gonna go into Santa. And we're gonna do like a completely opposite look. And I think what I wanna do with this one is really use this as a transition and outer corner shade. So really build this up in the outer corner. Matter of fact, I, I'm thinking, let's just put this all over the lid. I think this will be a great base for another one of these shimmers. I'm not sure which one. Gonna take a little bit of White Christmas and use that to soften this up. That's the matte white. I wanna make this a little softer on the edges. So that shade is gonna be great. It's actually making it a little more pink, you know, with the red and white. So I'm looking at these toppers and trying to figure out which one I'd like to use, but I'm thinking this middle one, and these feel a little wet. So let's do that. Let's do the middle one. I think the gold with the little pink reflex is going to look nice. This time I'm going to take this Morphe brush, which is a little more dense. And again, this is the Mayron Mixing Medium. This is what I tend to use. Usually I have this available. If not, you can use any setting spray, but I like the, the Mixing Medium. So I think that looks pretty. And it's really simple. It's like a very simple look. I'm not sure if all of these will feel as wet if you go in as, as much as I did. Cause I went in really deep on this middle shade. So now I'm going to use my finger. You can see there's some texture there. And if I use more of the main round mixing medium, oftentimes that will really liquefy the shade. I'm going to take a little bit of Rudolph and just tap that over top of what I already have. Just doing a little bit of extra here for like a holiday look. So this probably depending on the way you're looking at it, it's kind of giving it more of an iridescent lavender pop here. So I like that. And then I'm gonna go back into Santa, kind of have it blend together. And I'm taking what's left on my brush and going under the lower lash line, taking a little bit of White Christmas and going over top of that just to make it a little softer. So 
So it has more of like an ethereal, see how it's soft right there? And I, I just recently started getting into blend out shades, but now I see why they're important. You just don't need a whole bunch of blend out shades. You know what I mean? But see how that really softens up? Like if you're doing like a real holiday look or going somewhere, I'm just saying, or have, have on lashes, this is like gives you the dramatics with it. I've got a little too much here, but that's okay. I love that. Yes, yes, yes to that. So I have two shimmers that I haven't used, Sauna and Peace, but I wanna go into Peace. Has a little hint of like icy blue in it. Oh yes, look how pretty that is. Okay, that's nice. All right, that's the second look. First look again. I am going to put on mascara and some liner and then I will be back to let you know what I think about these two looks and the palette. All right, you guys, back with the final look. I'm into this. So let me tell you about this um, eyeliner. First of all, okay, <laughs> this is my Urban Decay Game of Thrones liner in Lannister Gold. I think that's what it's called. Lies. I totally lied. This is space dust, but that wasn't the idea. <laughs> the idea was to get my Game of Thrones liner in Lannister Gold because I wanted to tell y'all that I did finish House of Dragons, House of the Dragon, and I'm reading the book now. But the book, so the House of the Dragon only covers one chapter. That's not even the beginning of the book, Fire and Blood. So I'm reading Fire and Blood, listen to it on Audible, and I have the book. So I call myself reading it because I'm reading and listening at the same time. And then sometimes I read and reread because it's a lot. That's not the point. The point is I thought this was the Lannister Gold from the Urban Decay. I really like both looks. I don't think I can choose a favorite. I like both of them. So let me know what you think about what I came up with. I did use all of the shades except one. If you're looking for these shimmers to really pop, because they didn't really pop too much in the swatches, you are gonna need to put them over the deeper base and spray them. And I feel like when I did that, they look nice. As far as me using them on my cheeks or lips or as a highlighter, they have a little more sparkle than I would personally wanna have. These days, I tend to go for highlighters that even if they're a different color, that they are smooth. So these aren't shades I would personally use as a highlighter, and I probably wouldn't use them on the lips because I would stick to these as eyeshadows. That's just my personal preference and the way I like my makeup to look. But I think it's nice to know that they are intended to be used on the cheeks, eyes, and lips. So yes, and I could always make the look more dramatic by adding lashes, or wearing you know a different lip color again i just chose this because i wanted something that was going to be neutral that would really um that wouldn't take away from the eye looks so that's just what i went with today but i'm really happy with how both looks turned out the mattes blended just like the nomad mattes typically do they they blend out very well and the shimmers, I, I think over the past couple of palettes, we've been getting some different shimmer formulas. So like in the Provence palette, I didn't really like those, but I love the ones in the Costa Rica palette. I like the ones in the fall Hudson Valley palette, but those to me had less shine than in the Costa Rica palette. So they seem to be giving us a lot of different things. They are giving us variety giving us inspo, giving us uniqueness as far as color stories go. And I love that about Nomad Cosmetics. So even if something's not my favorite, I love the creativity and just the inspo for their palettes, the shades and the names. If you're interested in this palette, again, it's launching on November 1st at 11 a.m. EST. I do have a code, it's not affiliated, but it's Frizz Face, and that'll save you 10%. So that's gonna be it for this video. I feel like it went by kinda quick, probably cause August isn't here. I know y'all gonna miss him, but he went, Tyrone took his boys to the mall and he wanted to go, so they're eating lunch and my dad's about to stop by. So I'm gonna get on out of here. I hope you all have 
a wonderful Sunday. And just know I really love mimosas and makeup and I love it because of you all. I love it because of the chat and the discussions that we have that really go so far beyond makeup. It is a huge part of my weekend and one of the best parts of my Sunday. So I want you to know that. I thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me for this one. The next one's gonna be number 100, y'all. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna make it a big deal, but I'm just, I can't believe that it's been 100 of these videos. It's, it's, that's just crazy, y'all. So anyway. I hope this was therapy for you. It always is for me. So until I see you again, make sure you are being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice, stay safe, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.